Welcome everybody here to the Kelly Athletic Complex in West Orange, New Jersey. We've got an Essex County showdown coming on our ways between the Columbia Cougars of Maplewood and the home Seen All Prep Pirates. On the call today, I'm Rohan Pai. Join with me doing some commentary as Lars Dorson while we have Grant Kirsten on the camera and Gus Reed up in the press box to help with some spotting. Lars, are you excited for this one? Absolutely ex excited. Crosstown matchup, West Orange, South Orange. I'm excited for this one. It's always a fun time when we play Columbia. This is Columbia's first game of the season after Ferris of Jersey City canceled on the Cougars, which would be their first round game on Friday. So you know, Prep coming in 2-0 on the season. We'll talk about some of their games later on. But before that, let's take a look at some keys to the game. These keys to the game presented by the Daniels Group as we thank them for sponsoring us this season. Starting with Columbia, they've got to protect a young goalkeeper in net. Is Zach Calvaric, well he's a senior grade-wise, this is his first year of playing soccer. First year at the varsity level, first year of soccer in general at the high school level. So they've got to, you know, limit the shots he has to endure. Also for the Cougars, control the tempo of the game. So much of soccer is possession. Cougars have to do their best to control the tempo and control possession. Lars, why don't you give me a scene all preps? For scene all prep, shutting down senior captain Sebastian Rios Valdez will be key for them. He's one of the better players on this Columbia team, and Matt Masseri is going to have his work cut out for him today. Masseri and Levy in playing D, they're going to have their work cut out. And limiting mental mistakes. Last game against... Um, Garfield? Last? Garfield. Last Friday against Garfield, had some mental mistakes near the end, Got things got a bit chippy. I believe we had three yellows on this... to some technical difficulties, but luckily that happened before the start of the game. Seton Hall Prep will be in their home blue uniforms. We saw them wear white when Garfield came to town on Friday, but today will be wearing white. The Cougars, that is, in white. They've got new jerseys this year, pretty nice, pretty fancy. They have red home jerseys, but we'll wear their visiting jerseys today. So the Pirates, coached by Marty Berman in his 39th season, are 2-0 on the year. Pirates ranked fourth in the state and play in the SEC American Division, the top division in the county. Cougars, coached by Ryan Muirhead in his fifth season, are yet to play this year and play in the second division in the SEC. The Liberty, facing the likes of Bloomfield, Glen Ridge, MKA, Newark Academy, and West Essex. Like I mentioned, Columbia was supposed to play Ferris on Friday, but the game got canceled, so a good opening test for a young Columbia team. This is a real opportunity to prove something today, Lars. Absolutely is. Seton Hall Prep coming off an impressive win against number eight in the state ranked Garfield. They took that one three to one. Columbia, they've got some work cut out for them. It'll be Columbia ball to start as star sophomore Utah Goldberg stands over. A couple players to keep your eye out for for Columbia. Goldberg, number 10, as well as Rios Valdez on the bottom of your screen. He dons the number seven jersey and the captain's armband. For seeing all prep, keep your eye out for All-State midfielder Ben Mills. He wears number 10 and is also a captain. As we're underway in West Storms, we've got a good Essex County game right here on D1 Media Pro. Seeing all prep will bring a high press as they start in a 4-4-2 formation with Pierce and Ariza up top. Columbia's got a lot of first-year varsity guys as they'll dink it up the field. Rolling over is Flynn Danheiser, showing off the speed. And a foul going to be drawn by Danheiser Plenka, the man charged with committing it. Columbia on the attack early. Trying to go quick for the Cougars, but they'll have to slow down. It's Sam Brash to take the kick, as they've got numbers in the box. Here's Brash's free kick. It's a low one, headed away by Bernardo Tinajera. Ariza will try to play Pierce through. Flag stays down. As Will Pierce will go one on one with Ron Martin. Pierce went to his left as Calvaric makes his first save of the game, pushing it wide. Mills, first of the ball for the Pirates. Mills will stop and fire, and that one rolls just wide of the left post. Columbia avoids a dangerous situation as this game just a minute in. Yeah, Will Pierce on the attack had a good look, got slowed down, kicked to the Mills. That sets them up for their first kick of this game. How about Seton Hall Prep breaking on the counterattack there? 
These guys play fast and they play strong. Columbia has got to be careful. It'll be Mills tended in as he stands over the ball. Masseri breaks to the far post. Calvera comes out, bobbles it, but the Cougars are able to clear it out of the box. Piscavich will send one out as Calveric playing way far off his line, will retreat back to goal. Here's Pierce playing an unfamiliar center midfielder role as the Pirates will reset all the way back to the foot of Matt Masseri. Resets to Levy. Seton Hall Prep versus Columbia is one of the oldest and finest soccer rivalries in the state of New Jersey. True fans recall back in the early days when Columbia dominated in the second half of the 20th century until Seton Hall Prep beat the national number one ranked Cougars in 1989 behind a phenomenal performance of Seton Hall Prep All-State goalie Art Batista. So Columbia used to be a national powerhouse. Now the tides have kind of changed as we see Seton Hall Prep constantly dominating in the state. As that's a tough challenge won by Captain Alejandro of Venezuela. Looking to get Rios Valdez involved as Anderson steps through it for the Pirates. That's a fun matchup to watch as two friends will battle along the left side of the wing. Sebastian Rios Valdez for Columbia and Graham Anderson of Senal Prep, both Maple natives. As Dan Heiser will play the runner along the wing. Cutting it back and firing was Columbia's by Sachs, but a good easy save there for Clemus to open this up. Let's talk about you know, prep starting goalkeeper Michael Clemus, Lars. His first year at the helm, obviously replacing graduated Ray Bonanno. He, he's, got, he's got a big frame. Looks at 6'5", also a basketball player. He's looked good, only giving up one goal in his first two games. Definitely someone to keep your eye out for. Anderson missed slips. Columbia Press doing its job early. To take the throw is junior Barry Navin. It's a far throw. He's looking for Jasper Rochette, but stepping through with no fear was Xavier Levy. Ariza wants the ball as Mills will draw the foul. It's Brash committing it for the Cougars. Mills scored six goals last season as a junior to go along with 19 assists. Already has three goals and two assists on this young year. It's definitely going to be one of the state, the leaders in the state for goals, and I wouldn't be surprised if he has assists as well. How about that move from Ben Mills? A beautiful ball playing Bernardo Tinojero in. Anderson's cross will be scooped up by Cabrera. The young goalkeeper showing a bit of maturity early with a nice save there. Calveric, also a tall guy. I believe he's what, 6'2"? Yeah, maybe 6'2", 6'1". The Gettysburg commit, Daniel Deskevich goes down, but refs say play on. Here's a speedster, Rios Valdez on the left wing. He's going right at Anderson. Rios Valdez trying to use his speed to go around as Anderson, a tough tackle. It'll go out of bounds. Columbia throw coming here in Seton Hall prep territory. Navin will take it quickly. Masseri heading it all the way into the hands of Columbia coach Ryan Muirhead. For the Pirates, Benjamin Mills, of course, leading the squad with three goals. Ariza has two, and Bernardo Tinajero also has two. As that ball will go out of bounds, sideline ref says it'll stay. Columbia possession. Levy tries to clear it as it's deflected. Luckily, Clemus there to grab hold of it. So Columbia showing some aggression early. Trying to keep Seton Hall prep on the defensive. Cougars may be a young team, but they're not here to get pushed around. As Masseri will send one high, Martin chesting it down. Mills has it in the middle of the field and will turn his defender. Running along the wing, here's Will Frank. 
As that ball will go out of bounds, refs say Columbia ball. Will Pierce, who's had a tough go of things, just a sophomore in varsity, loses it there. Great. Let's hear you for a bit. What do you think of this game so far? Well, we're seeing a lot of aggression from the Cougars. It's, um, you know, we, we see uh, Sebastian Rios Valdez putting in the work. He's shown off his speed, and unfortunately we haven't been able to see any real plays. Um, but I'm liking the aggression, especially from such an underdog team. Navin possesses along the wing, but Mills there to earn it, and we go to Allen Seton Hall prep throw coming here. Here's a fun story for you, Lars. Coach Berman of the Pirates actually grew up in Maplewood and attended Clinton Elementary School. As a sophomore and junior for Columbia in the late 60s, he helped Columbia qualify for the state playoffs for the first time under legendary coach Gene Chisowitz. Berman called the great Chisowitz a father figure to him after graduating college. Chisowitz even asked Berman to coach his Columbia players in the spring. Did he ever end up coaching Columbia? Yeah, for many years. He coached the squad in the spring. As Dan Heiser will fire a deep shot and hit the goal. How about that shot from the sophomore? Flynn Danheiser from 30 yards out. He puts the Cougars on top of the fourth ranked Pirates, one to zero, just eight minutes into this ball game. Flynn Danheiser with a shot just, just around the edge of the 18 yard box, right past the diving arms of Klimas. Klimas had a lot of time to react, reacted a little too late as these upstart Cougars on top of the Pirates here, one to zero. How about that, a dream start for Ryan Muirhead's men. We also saw the Pirates down 1-0 to Garfield early in the first half. Let's see how they can recover. This is a Pirates team that dominated Life Center Academy 10-0 last week before a statement 3-1 win over 8th ranked Garfield Friday. Pirates, who trailed 1-0 early in that game, scored three unanswered, including two in the second half, not the Boilermakers. They'll hope for a repeat fate today. You know, last year, Seton Hall Prep was a bit shaky in their county matchups, losing to Newark Eastside home and losing to Montclair on the road. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do this year. Last season, of course, Pirates went 19-2-1, finishing third in the SEC American, yet winning their ninth county title, 10th non-public A North title, and fifth overall state championship after beating CBA 3-0 in early November. Cougars, on the other hand, had a bit of a down year, going 5-9-2, lost a heartbreaker to Montclair 4-3 in the first round of the state playoffs. Cougars went 1-5-1 in the SEC American Division and dropped to the Liberty this fall. So that's just the second goal Columbia's led up all season. Seen all prep. Lots Seen all prep, up. that is. First goal Columbia scored this season. As Ariza has it at the edge of the box. A great challenge there from Bly Sack as Brash tries to clear it. Once again, Calveric really going to save. He'll elect to roll it out for Venezuela. Valenzuela. It's pronounced Venezuela. Is it? It is. Okay. As Martin running along the wing will try to cut it inside to Goldberg, can't do so. As Maseri will let it roll all the way into the hands of Clemus. Do you hear any whistles on the broadcast? That's because the JV team is in action on the flip side of our field, so be alert for that. As Pierce will take a tumble, get it right back up and send one deep. Running onto the ball, there's Daniel Arizo with a lot of grass ahead of him. Valenzuela does well to clear it out as Tunejero takes a fall. Tunejero trying to navigate through space, can't do so. As here's Goldberg at the logo. He'll look to play Rios Valdez as he crashes onto the ball, heading it down to Sebastian Rios Valdez, but the Calvary comes, and Levy clears it out of bounds for the Pirates. This Columbia team, Lars, they've been on this attack early. Yeah, and they've, played, they've stopped Seton Hall Prep's attempts as well. Seton Hall Prep only with a one shot in the one corner. Let's see if they have a response here. 
As Mills looks for Pierce, Ginsburg deals with it. Trying to turn his Navin as he'll earn his team a free kick. Now, now, Navin and Tianjaro getting a little bit chippy here. Just over 10 minutes in. It's what you like to see in high school soccer, especially when two rivals meet. That ball will bounce all the way to the end line as Frank will clear it out. Saved in bounds by Yuta Goldberg as the goal scorer Dan Heiser has it. Trying to do something as Dan Heiser, but he is followed up by X Levy. So here comes Mills breaking the other way. He'll hit one with the outside of his boot up to Ariza. Flag stays down. Ariza trying to cross one just a little too strong as it'll roll out of bounds. Columbia goal kick coming up here. CNL Prep has dominated this rivalry, winning all five of the most recent matchups dating back to 2018, including a 9 to 0 trashing in the 2019 Essex County Tournament. The most recent matchups have been classics, including a 2022 3 to 2 CNL Prep victory, where the Cougars led with two minutes to go, with less than five minutes in the game, but the Pirates scored three in that time, winning in overtime. Last year, it was tied at half before CNL Prep scored twice in the second, outshooting the Pirates 14 to 4 all game during the 2 to 0 win. Coming to crash onto the ball is Will Pierce. As he'll give it away, Dan Heiser looks to break the other way for Columbia. It's clear Columbia's goal plan early here is to just play Rios Valdez as Anderson goes down. Cougars have tried to send a lot of balls over the top, looking in the direction of Rios Valdez. We'll see if they keep up with that strategy all game. Anderson called him the sprinter before. He's keeping up with the speedy Rios Valdez early on. It's a good matchup to watch. Goldberg will turn and fire outside of the boot shot. Will roll wide left of the goal. So a seeing all prep goal kick up in here. Another good looking opportunity from the Cougars. Columbia's got some cool managers on the sideline, including basketball players Jude Brantley and Jerry Brown. As Planka possesses in the middle for the Pirates. Chinajero has numbers, but that ball way too strong. Calveric picks it up. Couple crosses ahead for the Pirates, just a little heavy to start. Let's see if they can tone that down. Make sure to stick around as during halftime, Columbia lacrosse player Gus Reed will join our broadcast for a bit of an interview. As Rios Valdez will head it forward, no one there for the Cougars. Ginsburg will first time it away for the Pirates. As Valenzuela steps through, clears it away from Pierce. Senior, senior forward Dan Nadeshkevich. Coming on for the first time today, takes out Chris Planka. I'm oh, sorry, this guy is a midfielder. Pierce will play Anderson on the 1 2. Still in bounds as Navin will play the extra ball to Dan Heiser. Dan Heiser looks forward. Frank there to clear for the Pirates as. Mills will bring down Dan Heiser in the middle of the field. Brash will leave it for Valenzuela. As Matt Molka getting loose on the left side of the field. Haven't seen Molka yet today. Scored two goals last year as a junior. Breaking is Ben Mills, he's got Will Pierce. Wide open, Pierce will crash onto the ball, but Ginsburg wins the foot race. Fifteen minutes gone in this first half. Columbia leads one to zero thanks to a Flynn Danheiser goal. Pierce will try to play Ariza, but Martin will head it out of bounds for a deep, deep, deep Seen Hall prep throw in. 
Numbers in the box for the Pirates. As Mills will check to the ball. Ben Mills goes right around Rios Valdez and tries to go through two and goes down. Right near As the a free the kick, yeah, going to come here right at the edge of the box. Ben Mills are uh, the obvious man to take it. We've even got the, the, the spray paint here today. Professional. So Calvaric will set his wall. It's a two-man deep wall. Reels Valdez and Navin, the set men. My guess is Mills will send this one in the box and have a big man like Pierce or Ariza or Maseri put his head through it. This is exactly that. Good-looking ball headed away by Sam Brash. O'Connor will send one back in as it bounces around. Maseri puts his foot through it. Still Maseri, but a good block there from Riley Walsman. Dan Heiser will turn as he's got Sachs making a run. O'Connor with a great challenge prevents the Columbia advance. And will be called Pirates ball. Throwing from just behind midfield. Mills will try to switch the field. Flag comes up. So a free kick coming for the Pirates here. 17 gone, 22 to go. Cougars. In this first half. It's been all Columbia so far as they obviously lead. 1-0 to zero as Bernardo Tunejero takes a seat on the bench. Chris Planka returns to the ball game. You know, this goalkeeper was unknown for Columbia until former Seen Hall Prep student Zach Calveric decided to play soccer for the first time since middle school. Calveric is a multi-sport athlete playing baseball and hockey. Actually played varsity hockey for the Pirates before transferring mid-year as a sophomore. Yeah, I guess he just liked the program better. Tina Jaro getting looked at by trainer on the side. Calveric's debut going just as well as it could be. So he's got a shutout and his team has a 1-0 lead. Almost halfway done with his first half. He'll be able to keep that up. I'll be impressed, but I know this Pirate squad will be firing for the next 60 minutes. That one's cleared up in the air by Will Frank. As it'll be another Columbia throw in coming. Blanco will rip through as a nice challenge there for Mills ends with Brash on the ground. Levy will try to play Mills through as the refs will play advantage after a seemingly high kick from Ben Mills. Rios Valdez will let that one roll through his legs as he goes through Anderson. Still Rios Valdez as it'll go out of bounds staying with Columbia. Taking the throw for the Cougars is Junior Barry Navin. As he'll send one across, looking for Bly Sachs. Sachs will head it down into the chest of Jack Bigley. How about that turn from Bly Sachs as he tries to send one in? Levy there to clear it for the Pirates. As Ginsburg will possess for the Cougars. Stepping through is Jasper Rochette as he'll play Sachs along the wing. Sachs is cross, a good one. Clemens using his frame to step through as Mills will pull it out for the Pirates. Rios Valdez will pocket Mills as it's sent deep. Ginsburg heads it forward, Ariza there for the Pirates. Now the sophomore Will Pierce, but Rod Martin, how about that defensive stand winning the ball and sending it forward. Columbia returned their leading scorer and sophomore Utah Goldberg, who had seven goals and one assist as a freshman last year. 
Sub coming here as Matt Mollica will enter the game for the first time. Taking a seat for the Cougars is goal scorer Flynn Danheiser. All right, Flynn! Gets, a, gets an ovation. Gets a well-deserved ovation from the Columbia faithful who made the journey out to the CAC. Mollica, an ever solid midfielder. There were talks of him playing some left back this year, but will come in in a central midfielding role. As Mills, how about that? Going right around Brash, he'll look to play Ariza through. Calveric will leave his line and head one straight in the air as Ariza goes down in the box. Refs say no foul, we play on in West Orange. A bit confused as why there's no foul. Looks like he clearly got taken down inside the box, but refs have been lenient today. Cougars have numbers ahead of them as Molico will fire a deep shot, seemingly too deep, as Clemens eats that up for the Pirates. It was a good looking opportunity for Seton Hall Prep, unable to capitalize. Ariza, yeah, looked to go down in the box. No call though, as they'll look to build upon this momentum. Seton Hall Prep, of course, coached by Marty Berman in his 39th season. He's got a career record of 553 wins, 195 losses, and 66 ties. As Alejandro Valenzuela does well. Navin will just roll it out of bounds. Seton Hall Prep throwing coming here. But subs coming on for both squads. For the Pirates, Sebastian Sempone enters the game. For Columbia, Noah Fontil and Sev Podgurski enter for the first time as Bly Sachs and the captain, Sebastian Rios Valdez, take their respective seats on the bench. Rios Valdez is giving uh, Graham Anderson some work. I'm sure Anderson's happy about his Seen all prep time. throw taken quickly as Deskevich has it. He'll try to switch the field. Looking for Sempone, can't find him as the ever dangerous Mills has it. Mills will play Ariza, sorry, Anderson through. Anderson's cross, blocked by Navin for a Seton Hall prep throw. Pirates will play back as Bigley first to the ball. Deskevich has a swarm of Cougars on him as it's still loose in the middle of the field. Turning is the Gettysburg commit, Danny Deskevich. Deskevich will go down, refs say all ball. That's definitely the right call from up here as Navin will play Goldberg in the middle of the field for the Cougars. Running onto the ball, here's Matt Malka. Masseri leaving it. Malka will get it back. Going one-on-one -on -one with Masseri as Malka as he'll elect to give it up for Podgurski. But Masseri, another beautiful piece of defending, will earn it back for the Pirates. Anderson will just send one up the field. I'm sure this is an emotional game for Coach Berman as, like I mentioned, a 1970 graduate of Columbia. Calveric will leave his box again and hit one forward. Some brave goalkeeping so far in this game from the senior Zach Calveric. Clemus can't save it from going out of bounds. So a Columbia corner kick coming here. The Cougars nesting a 1-0 lead thanks to Flynn Danheiser eight minutes in. We'll have a corner with 15 minutes to go in this first half. This has been all Cougars, something we rarely see when the Seton Hall team is playing. Taking the corner for Columbia is Matt Malka. It's an in-swinging ball, bending and Will touch no one going out of bounds for a Seton Hall Prep goal kick. Coach Berman, his son, the younger Coach Berman, and Coach Snyder sitting on the bench on the sideline. Perhaps there's some nerves going through them, Lars. Yeah, first time. Well, they, they were down Friday against a, a higher ranked team in Garfield. A better but, team in Garfield, that is. But, but you know, these, these county matchups. This is a matchup that Columbia really wants. I'm not saying that Garfield doesn't want it. It's just that when you play these teams every year and, and Seton Hall Prep wins most of these matchups, and Columbia's up 1-0, they're, they're pushing for a win. So. You know, Lars, there's a common saying 
when a team plays Seton Hall Prep, it's their Super Bowl. When Seton Hall Prep plays the team, it's another game. Yeah, we definitely see that a lot, especially for, for other teams in the county. This is their one chance a year to really make a name. Although Seton Hall Prep and Columbia are both in the Super Essex Conference, Seton Hall Prep plays in the top division, the American, Columbia, and the second division, the Liberty. As Mills will take this free kick, Masseri will walk his way up to the box. He's being man-marked by the big sophomore, Yuta Goldberg. Looking for Masseri, but Calmeric. How about that? Leaving his line once again, grabbing it, and preserving this one-goal lead. Martin will send one forward, but Masseri there to kick it back. A nice challenge there from Valenzuela. All ball is Ariza a little slow to get up. Ariza's been knocked around this first 25 minutes. Anderson will play Ariza through, trying to turn Valenzuela can't do so as it'll be called a high kick, I believe. Malika will leave it for Valenzuela. Talk a bit about the SEC Liberty Division. They've got some tough teams in there like Bloomfield. I can always see MKA making a run at the division and Nurse Academy too, Lars. Yeah, MKA has a, has a tough team this year, especially last year. Sure, two years ago, they took Seton Hall prep to overtime. They, they've, they've always got a, a good squad. West Essex, another team to watch for as Rochette and Brash take a seat on the bench. Checking in are Belial and number 15. That's all over Clark. Frank tries to play through. Four subs out there for Columbia, so. Seen them call prep once a chance, it would be now. As Belial will hold in the middle of the field. Columbia will reset off the foot of senior captain, four-year varsity man, Alejandro Valenzuela, although Mills will step through and intercept it. Numbers here for the Pirates as Pierce wide open on the wing. Will Pierce will fire a shot by Calvary. A body save preserves this lead at one for the Cougars. It's been the Pirates' first real good opportunity of the day, and Pierce fires a shot. Calvary, nothing he can't handle. You can't get more open than that, Will Pierce. Got to finish that one. Pierce, a good goal. Sure has two goals already in the young year. Just can't put one in the back of the net here. 11 minutes to go in this first half. Will be Mills on the far side. Here's Mills' corner kick, an in-swinging ball. Headed away. Calvary takes a fall as it's loose. Anderson will be first to the ball for the Pirates. As taking a fall was Wolfie Ginsburg. Still down on the field. I believe that is Yuta Goldberg, or am I mistaken? Goldberg, I believe, as Mills will get a talking to from the ref as Goldberg back up on his feet, thankfully. This one getting chippy early as the clock still runs with 10 minutes, 20 seconds on the board. The refs never signaled to stop the clock, so the clock resumes. The clock only stops if the ref signifies it to stop, as he does just then, so a minute will roll off the clock as we'll step away. Here, 10 minutes to go in this first half. Group with family. No, no, no. On, on. Back in West Orange as Mills' ball will just roll straight out of bounds. Columbia goal kick coming here. That's a sub coming on. 
Mason. Bob Pierre. Bob Pierre enters as the Cougar star sophomore, Utah Goldberg, will trot his way over to the bench. Goldberg looks like a rib injury as he'll take a seat. High press from the Cougars as Sampone wins a tough challenge in the middle. Malka forced to deal with it, will kick it forward. As it's headed backwards into the gloves of Zach Calvert. So we've seen 30 minutes of action that's been safe to say dominated by these Cougars. Flynn Danheiser, the difference in this game in the 32nd minute, or 8th minute, 30 seconds to go in the first half. Loose in the middle as Beau Pierre touches it for the first time. Wanting it is Oliver Clark as he'll play Fontiel on the wing. Fontiel trying to go around Will Frank. Will retain possession until Frank will clear it out for the Pirates. Still loose, brought down by Clark. Clark has no choice but to go backwards to Ron Martin as Barry Navin calling for it on the weak side of the field. Here comes Pierce breaking the other way, Ariza making a run. Going down is Oliver Clark, Will Pierce committing his third foul in this young ball game. Saw him commit some fouls and even get a yellow card against Garfield on Friday. He's got to watch out. That Garfield game a true battle as many yellow cards were distributed. As Big Lee takes a tough fall, Molica going to be charged with it. Malka doesn't like that call and will voice his opinion to the ref to no avail. Masseria will send one deep. Valenzuela will step through to win the 50-50 for the Cougars. Frank, a dangerous ball as Beau Pierre will crash on it. Crisis averted for the Pirates as Anderson will send it forward the other way. Refs will call a push on the Cougars. So a Seton Hall prep free kick coming here with seven minutes on the board. Well, Frank's got to be a little more careful in the back, Will, uh, Lars. Yeah, that, that could have been bad for the Pirates. Luckily, Clemus was able to with that ball out, but could have been 2-0 very quickly. Handball going to be called on Ben Mills. Cougars tried to play quick, ref says, hold on. Rios Valdez set to check in. Here's Valenzuela's free kick. Trying to play Belisle as it's headed into the waiting arms of Michael Clemus. Playing quickly are the Pirates as Sempone will play Pierce inside. Pierce will turn straight into the foot of Matt Mollica. Clark's got real state ahead of him. Will fire a left-footed shot right to Clemus. Just under six minutes to play in this first half. Pirates still on top, one to zero. Cougars are on top. Cougars on top, sorry. As a low punt from Clemis will bounce high in the air. Dealing with it is Rod Martin, only as far as Ben Mills. As Sempone, a nice looking ball will find Daniel Ariza. Ariza's got runners working along the front end line as Ariza, but a nice, nice piece of defending, Alejandro Valenzuela. The four-year varsity man doing his part. Navin's got numbers ahead of him. We'll play Malka. Malka trying to get too chippy with it. We'll play it straight out of bounds. Anderson will try to go quickly. Nice throw from Anderson as Pierce can't do anything with it. Martin will head it. Straight across. Going down is Oliver Clark. Refs say play on. 
as here's Deskevich. Deskevich working on Navin, will blow right past him. His cross dealt with by Ginsburg. Still Pierce, left footed shot, blocked. As the Cougars and Molica break the other way. Anderson clamps up Molica. As Fontiel will get behind Will Frank, but Frank recovers and will play Clemus back. High in the air, headed forward by Belisle. Big Lee, who's played big minutes so far for the Pirates, making the pass as Mills will play Anderson on the wing. So Ceno Prep looking a bit more settled in here. Under five to play, just four on the board as Mills will blow by Blyle. Ariza will slip. Then Mills firing through like a cannon. I feel like I say that every game as he's got Descavage making a run on his right side. Mills in the box will lose it. Valenzuela getting to the ground to clear it as Levy plays it forward. <coughs> Bigley's got a bunch of Cougars around him. We'll play Anderson. As here's to Skevich. On the bottom of your screen, Danny Skevich is crossed, blocked. As Calvary. A nice reaction save there off a of deflection. Once again, keep his lead at 1 0 to the Cougars. Stoppage of the clock here as Valenzuela is down. Three minutes, 23 seconds on the board. We're stepping away right back with this great game. Back at the Kelly Athletic Complex as Valenzuela is on his feet, looking good. Subbing on for him is Captain Riley Walsman. As the teams retake field, 3.23 to go. Columbia 1-0 lead. Their goal scored by Flynn Danheiser in the eighth minute. A nice crowd at the Kelly Athletic Complex. A good mix of parents, fans, and students. Definitely more of an away crowd than we normally see with... Columbia only being about 15 minutes down the road. Let's talk about two players in this game who actually started their careers at Seton Hall Prep. That's goalie Zach Calveric and Sebastian Rios Valdez. Both of them transferred uh, in sophomore year. Finding new opportunities and success at Columbia. It's always good to see. It's not for everyone here. As Bigley will win it around the 30-yard line, but Fontill flying through. Mills as well there as it goes out of bounds. It'll be a Columbia throw-in, Navin to take. Sempone will send one forward. Ariza brings it down, but Belisle there for Columbia. As a tough collision, Ben Mills staying on his feet, only as far as Oliver Clark. But a foul going to be called there. Hard to hear that whistle. Yeah, it looks like a hard collision. Refs eventually give it to Mills after the play comes to a bit of a stop. In space is Daniel Deskevich. As Ariza will lose it. Here comes Rios Valdez playing on the right side. He'll go right around Masseri. Still Rios Valdez, flag stays down, working along the inside. Not As out. Frank has it for the Pirates. And it'll go out of bounds for a Columbia throw. So that was an obvious intentional foul for Masseri, but the refs played advantage. Unfortunately, didn't amount to anything for the Cougars, but
just 90 seconds on the big board here at the Kelly Athletic Complex with beautiful views of New York City. As Martin, a defender, has it in the box, he'll just lose it. Sempone booting it forward. Walsman will play Clark in the middle of the field. Clark's got Navin on the left wing. Navin's ball headed away by Will Frank. 60 seconds as Clark brings it down. Deskevich firing through. Pirates just try to work it to the other half of the field as Arizo will turn and play Pierce. Flag immediately comes up. Will Pierce, you're off sides. Yeah, that was, that was pretty clear. Uh, Pirates understandably trying to get one back. 40 seconds left, but unable to do so. Pirates will take their time with this free kick as they want to go into this half, preserving and nurturing their one goal lead. Ginsburg will send one high in the air. Masseri heads it out. 15 seconds as here comes the speedster Ben Mills. He's got numbers ahead of him, but Belial will win it back for the Cougars. Final seconds. As the buzzer sounds, signifying the end of this first half here at the Kelly Athletic Complex, these upstart Cougars have a 1-0 lead on the Pirates. Their goal scored in the eighth minute, courtesy of sophomore Flynn Danheiser. So a rough first half for the Pirates. Lars, talk to me a bit about this game so far. Columbia's been on the attack most of the time. They've been able to keep the ball in Seton Hall prep territory. A lot of possession time. That was one of their keys to the game, limiting mistakes and keeping possession. They've been able to do that so far. We saw the goal in the eighth minute from Danheiser. The Seton Hall prep rarely seen was not able to respond. Had a couple shots, but goalie Zach Calvaric, young, young goalkeeper, has been able to respond. We're going to step away here, be back in about five minutes. We'll have Gus Reed, a Columbia lacrosse player, joining us up here in the press box for a little one-on-one -on -one interview. <laughs> hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. We're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick of tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! My kid heard that solo! You say my kid? Yeah, Come on! Everywhere you Living Sendetha Group, we treat you like family. Everywhere you look. Yeah. They hate when you elevate. The second of losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. I feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate They never believed that I would really fly, I had to go demonstrate I had to set them straight They hate when you elevate, elevate, elevate They hate when you elevate, yeah. I had to elevate I'm way, y'all, way too fly, uh, yeah, I'm feeling are you tired of struggling with your weight? Feeling like you've tried everything, but nothing seems to work? It's time to take control of your health and transform your life with Daniel's Group Plastic Surgery's Medical Assisted Weight Loss Program. Under the guidance of our experienced medical team, you'll receive personalized support and treatment tailored to your unique needs. With our comprehensive approach, you'll achieve sustainable results. Say goodbye to fad diets and frustrating weight loss attempts. Take the first step towards a healthier, happier you. Schedule your consultation today. Daniel's Group Plastic Surgery, where your goals become reality.
Do you want your... All right. We're glad to have Gus Reed join us on the program today, answer a few questions about the upcoming lacrosse season. So Gus, you're a lacrosse player at Columbia. What position do you play and what grade are you in? Uh, I used to play attack, but I'm going to start midi this year. I'm a senior. Nice. Talk to me about last season, and you played under first-year head coach uh, Ryan Downey, right? A senior all prep graduate, actually. Yeah, so first-year coach went pretty well. He uh, didn't have, we didn't have the best season, but it went as best as it could. And what are you excited for this season? This season I'm excited to try and have a winning record and make playoffs this year. Nice, it's always a good goal. So it's been a great game so far. Columbia on top of the Pirates, one to zero. Talk to me about this game. Who's impressed you the most on the field? What have you not been impressed with? Things like that, things of that nature. Right off the bat, I noticed uh, Bastian Rios Valdez's speed. He's electric out there. Um, Teen Hall has some, some good players, very fast, very quick, light on their feet. Um, and how about the uh, the goalkeeping play of Zach Calvary? Yeah, Pretty Zach Calvary, first year, he's, he's really impressed me. Making some fast reflex plays and thinking with his head. Great. That's all I have, Gus. We'll be back soon. Thanks for having me on here. It's been a great game today. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. We're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick of tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Lou! My kid heard that solo! You say it like it? Yeah, Come on! Everywhere you look, there's a heart. Living Sendetha Group, with Patricia Life Family. Everywhere you look, you can just rock that out. Yeah, they hate when you elevate. The second of losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate. I feel like I'm flowing, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate They never believed that I would really fly, I had to go demonstrate I had to set them straight They hate when you elevate, elevate, elevate They hate when you elevate, yeah. I had to elevate I'm way, y'all, way too fly uh, yeah, I'm feeling... Are you tired of struggling with your weight? Feeling like you've tried everything but nothing seems to work? It's time to take control of your health and transform your life with Daniel's Group Plastic Surgery's Medical Assisted Weight Loss Program. Under the guidance of our experienced medical team, you'll receive personalized support and treatment tailored to your unique needs. With our comprehensive approach, you'll achieve sustainable results. Say goodbye to fad diets and frustrating weight loss attempts. Take the first step towards a healthier, happier you. Schedule your consultation today. Daniel's Group Plastic Surgery, where your goals become reality.
Do you want your school to be covered by the number one live stream service in the state of New Jersey so the entire country can see moments like this? Well, you said Trafford's a shifty back. He gets motioned out. They'll give it right to him on the first down play, and he gets lit up. Oh, what a hit there by Jaden Bonsu. The kid with the pow. Pow. Oh, running people over, but still on his feet. He's gone. Touchdown. We got a touchdown. No flags. He's a bruiser. Aziz Foster Powell. Got to come up and lock up on that guy. In Jersey. We do games in PA. We all over the place, man. Oh, they kick it deep. They're going to try to cover this one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One man to beat, one man to beat, one man to beat. Touchdown. And we just traded touchdowns. Oh, oh, man, it's, it's Join the D1 Media Pro Team, New Jersey's number one live streaming service. Let's go! Boyd attacking and throws it down! Touchdown for St. Peter's! I'm here with Darren Lewis with Simeon Wilcher. Here with Precious Achua. It's about doing overtime. One. Back here at the Kelly Athletic Complex for the start of this second half. Let's talk about Columbia's back line of Alejandro Valenzuela and Wolfie Ginsburg, who have done a good job out there so far. The Cougars lead the Pirates 1-0, thanks to Flynn Danheiser's goal in the eighth minute from about 25 yards out. Take it back. As we're getting ready to start this second half here. So second half action, underway here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. <laughs> Pirates will start with the ball. As Baseri will possess for the Pirates. So what could have been the Pirates' downfall in this early going was they got off to a relatively slow start. Those first 10 minutes were almost entirely dominated by the Cougars of Columbia, and the scoreboard reflects that. As Bigley will play a nice looking ball through, crashing down on it is Dan Ariza. Ariza being hounded by Barry Navin will go down. Ref say get up. Pierce takes a tumble in the box, and that's a penalty for the Pirates. Rod Martin committing his second penalty in two years right here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. The Pirates, as good as a chance of any to equalize, just 30 seconds into the second half. First minute of the half, coming out hot out of the gate, and they draw a penalty. It will be Mills looking for his fourth goal of the season. Already has three in the first two games. Fourth goal of the season on the way, potentially. Two of his three goals have come from the penalty spot. He'll be facing a first-year varsity keeper in Zach Calvaric, although Rios Valdez whispered something to Calvaric, possibly about Mills' placement. So here's the senior, Ben Mills, right into the waiting arms of Zach Calvaric. We're still... Oh, Columbia, 1-0 lead. Calvaric not diving anyway. And Mills, Mills kicked it slow. Seen all prep's best opportunity of the game will amount to nothing as Zach Calvaric stands tall in net and makes a save. Here, Coach Berman, the younger Berman. The first time we've seen the Seen All Prep coaching staff on their feet this game as nerves really setting in to everybody here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. This would be a massive upset win if the Cougars somehow prevail as the Pirates ranked fourth in the state, Columbia unranked. Pirates coach is definitely wanting some urgency. Boot ahead to Ariza. But Calvaric comes off his line. He hasn't been too afraid to do that so far today. Calaveras made a bunch of key saves, none as crucial as that penalty kick save just about a minute ago. Mills was two for two from the spot before. Can't be perfect.
Trying to turn Will Frank to Sebastian Reels Valdez. As Martin will play it back. Martin, slow to get up. That ball headed back in. Anderson leaping high will head it over to Bigley. Bigley just a sophomore playing big minutes for the Pirates as Ariza played through a powerful shot. Will miss the goal by about three feet to the left. A good opportunity for the Pirates. Good build up and good shot. Just can't amount to a goal. Martin will come over to the sideline limping as Valenzuela enters the game again. Walsman will move to the right back position. Valenzuela will go to center back. Levy fearful as he wins that header. Good list. Valenzuela with a lot of green grass ahead of him will try to play Goldberg. Levy will poke it forward. Planka, a nice ball up forward to Descavage. Descavage has Pierce through. Pierce will go right around Riley Walsman, but the offsides flag coming up. Columbia's back line doing their job. Pirates faithful are saying no way. Ref had a pretty clear look at it, though. Ginsburg, who's donning the number one jersey, will take the free kick. Just a junior. Played MLS next for club PDA before deciding to play for his high school squad this year. Mills being tackled by Brash. As that's a tough assignment for the sophomore Sam Brash. Guarding the All-State midfielder and Ben Mills. Levy's able to save it from going out of bounds, but in dangerous position as Bly Sachs runs onto it. Sachs going against the sophomore Bigley. He'll go right past him. His cross, thankfully, deflected by Matt Masseri. Levy comes flying through as Ariza has it with space ahead of him. He's looking for Pierce on the wing. Pierce going one-on-one -on -one with senior captain Riley Walsman. He'll work to his left side, trying to cut it back as Will Pierce's cross high in the air. Headed away by Valenzuela. Mills, first of the ball for the Pirates, will stop and fire. Deflected by Baron Navin for a Seton Hall prep throw in. Sorry, corner kick. Mills to take it. This is the prep's third corner kick of the game. Numbers in the box. As Navin will head it through, still loose. As Sachs will break the other way. Great challenge from Anderson. Ginsburg will send one forward. The Cougars have numbers. As Flint Danheiser will play to Reels Valdez along the right side. Valdez will just fire a shot. Clemus there. Pirates the unable to convert. Another corner kick. And then a dangerous opportunity from the Cougars, dealt with well from Will Frank and. Xavier Levy. It's the first time this season we've seen the Pirates bench standing, not in their usual relaxed seated positions. No reason to be relaxed as they find themselves trailing by goal with 35 minutes to go in this game. Sachs will play Brash. As Danheiser will go right around Bigley. Crashing down on it is Riley Walsman. His cross low to the ground. Cleared away, Matt Misery, the captain, doing his job at center back. Cougars corner kick coming here. Rios Valdez, the taker. Columbia will put two guys on the end line to try to disrupt Clemus. Clemus, a big kid, 6'5", with a pretty huge wingspan, will try to leave his goal. As it's a high ball to the back post, headed away, Danny Ariza doing the business. Sachs will chop one over the crossbar, so goal kick coming here for the Pirates. Right. 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 
taken quickly and short. So Masseri will look forward, trying to find Deskevich. Can't find him as Brash will turn around Mills. Intercepting that is Will Frank. Nice sliding tackle from Ben Mills as the refs will play advantage, although Jack Bigley obviously fouled there. Calvaric leaving his net. We'll just hit one forward and into the visiting stands. Mills will find a scavenge. Getting it back is Ben Mills as he'll fire to the near post, but it's blocked by Navin. Great defensive effort from the junior. Mills looked like he had an open line. Unable to convert. This Columbia back fours played as well as you could want them to so far. As Reels Valdez can't get past Frank. Mills will play. Frank moving forward. As it's a bad ball from Will Frank. Turning it over, but getting it right back. Pirates trying to switch the field as Ariza will take a fall. Free kick, Seton Hall Prep. Taken quickly. As Ariza will play to scavenge in the middle. Stepping through is Ginsburg. Cougars trying to break the other way, only as far as Utah Goldberg. So here come the Cougars. Numbers ahead as Bly Sachs is crossed. A good looking ball. Just too far for Utah Goldberg. Will Frank will make the smart decision to head it out of bounds. Pirates definitely have to reset on defense here. I mean, Columbia has had a lot of attacks coming up the outside wing. Rochette will fire a shot. Clemus there to make the save. A good looking opportunity from the Cougars. Mills' pass intercepted by Rios Valdez. As Walsman will win it. Their captain, Matt Masseri, yelling at his teammates, encouraging them down 1 0. Here's a reason making the run. Ginsburg to defend. Sliding was Walsman. As Ariza will switch it all the way over to Anderson. Anderson will chop it over in the boxes to Skevich. Ariza shot, a rolling shot, saved by Calvary. How about the senior, Zach Calvary? First game of his varsity career against one of his toughest opponents all year. First game of his high school soccer career, playing like an all-state goalkeeper out there. Levy will play Mills along the wing. Here's the all-state. Senior midfielder Ben Mills trying to cut it back. Levy's still in there as that ball will roll out to Bly Sachs. Sachs going at Anderson will take a fall. Ball will roll out of bounds for a deep Columbia throw in. Called a gold kick, I believe. On the ground as Valenzuela as the clock stops, 28.50 on the scoreboard. We're going to step away as the training staff called onto the, field, onto the field. When we get back, Columbia throw in in deep, deep territory. Do you want your school to be covered by the number one live stream service in the state of New Jersey so the entire country can see moments like this. Well, you said Trafford's a shifty back. He gets motioned out. They'll give it right to him on the first down play. And he gets lit up. Oh, what a hit there by Jaden Bonsu. The kid with the pow. Pow. Oh, running people over, still on his feet. He's gone. 
Touchdown. Oh, we got a touchdown. No flags. He's a bruiser. Aziz Foster Howell. Got to come up and lock up on that guy. In Jersey. We do games in PA. We all over the place, man. Oh, they kick it deep. They're going to try to cover this one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One man to be, one man to be, one man to be. Touchdown. Hey, we just traded touchdown. Back. Back here is Barry Navin will attempt to throw in. Valenzuela on his feet, walking along the sideline. As that ball never came in bounds, so Seton Hall Prep will get a throw in in good position. Odd situation. So I'm go. Playing along the wind, trying to turn his Danny Ariza as it'll go out. Seton Hall prep corner kick coming. Mills, the taker again, fourth corner of the game. Takes it quick. It'll go quick, yeah, but Brash will head it straight up into the air. Sachs will dink it forward, but Masseri there for the Pirates. This is what we want to see from the Pirates, more offensive attacks. Nice ball, but fly comes up, Daniel Ariza offsides. Valenzuela taking his shoes off and his shin guards off. His day might be done. Not a great sign for the Cougars as he's been stellar at the center back position. Navin, high ball. Dealt with by Xavier Levy. It's been sophomore Jack Bigley playing big minutes today as Bernardo Tunajero, who usually plays most of the game for the Pirates, sitting on the bench. Martin will leave it for Calvaric, but it'll roll outside the box. Dangerous situation, but Big Lee will just send it forward. Interesting decision making from the young pirate. As Calvaric was out of his box there, could have just shot it on goal instead of shot it straight out of bounds. Masseri voicing some strong opinions, although that's the role of the captain. Nice string of play from the sophomore Jack Bigley. As a Brexit tackle for Riley Wolzman. That ball roll out of bounds. Seen all prep throw coming here. Wolzman will kick it out of bounds. Mills has it along the wing, bringing it inside is Ben Mills as he'll go down in the box. No call. Rios Valdez using his speed to go around Planka, but Bigley able to recover. Planka, though, going to be called for the penalty. Fifteen minutes elapsed here in this second half. No score yet. Pirates have been on the attack. And it will convert. Had a penalty early in the first two minutes after the break, but Calveric not letting anything through. On the wing, here's Graham Anderson as he'll play Ariza through. Flag stays down, Calveric will leave his box. Ariza just can't go around Calveric. Goal kick for the Cougars. Calveric doing exactly what's expected of him in that position, making himself big, forcing Ariza to make a decision. And a goal kick coming as a result.
15 gone in the second half, 24 to play in this game. Flynn Danheiser's eighth minute goal, the difference. As the Cougars find themselves on top of the fourth ranked team in the state, one to zero. Saw Frank come out recently for Semprom. Descavage has it in space. His shot going to be blocked by Brash. Sam Brash, the younger brother of Leo Brash, a longtime player for Columbia. As Ariza will fire a cross. No one there to put their head through it for the Pirates. Pierce misjudging it. I'm able to get anything on it. Subs getting loose on the Columbia bench. Belial, Malka, and Clark, the three in motion. As Masseri wins a good header. Mills has a lot of space ahead of him. Ginsburg comes to slide. Still Mills in the box. Ben Mills will fire a shot. A leg save from Zach Calveric as he does a splits out there. How about that from the senior Zach Calveric? Calveric has just been reading Mills to the T all game. If this game finishes as the scoreline reads now, it's clear who the MVP would be. Senior Zach Calveric in his first high school soccer game just playing out of this world. Rios Valdez looking for Goldberg on the inside, can't find him. Cleared away by Levy as Levy will take a fall, drawing a Seton Hall prep free kick. Ginsburg has it straight in the air as Navin will deal with it. His pass will be blocked and it'll go out of bounds. Last touch by Navin. Pirates trying to go quickly as Ariza's played through. Ginsburg crashing down on it. It'll go out of bounds. Seen all prep corner kick coming here. Ben Mills making his way over to the corner line. So the fifth corner kick of this game. As Masseri, Planka, Duskevich, Pierce, Ariza, and Bigley are lined up in the box for the Pirates. Good looking ball from Ben Mills as Masseri went airborne. No one there to deal with it as Sem Prom plays it forward. Anderson's got to be careful as he'll play Mills along the wing. Here comes another ball. As Pierce wide open will be called for the offsides. So another good trap by this Columbia back four. Will Pierce going to be called off sides on that far wing? Matt Pasternak looking to come on for the Pirates. 21 minutes left in this game. Here's the goal scorer, Flynn Danheiser, as Goldberg will hit it forward. Last touch by Anderson. So Columbia throw coming here as Navin will walk it up. It's a good throw as Rochette will run onto it. Cleared away by Matt Masseri. Bawile, Clark, and Malika set to check in for the Cougars. Pasternak for the Pirates. Here's Ben Mills as Ariza makes the run. Ginsburg will fly through like a comet and send another one forward. Just too far for Rios Valdez. Clemus will roll it out fast here. Sem Prom, Rios Valdez hawking him down like a cheetah. Walking it up as Plank does. He'll try to play Ariza, but Navin there to be the wall. That ball high as Rios Valdez will run onto it. Playing it back, Clebus. 
no choice but to send it up the middle of the field. Luckily, it'll bounce into the waiting feet of Daniel Deskevich. Deskevich will go around two Pirates defenders. So he's got space out of him. Ginsburg, beautiful challenge for the Cougars as he hits the turf and sends one forward. This scene all prep attack has been just neutralized by the play of Ginsburg, Valenzuela, Walsman, and Navin. As the subs come on for the respective squads, Rios Valdez, Gas, will take a seat on the bench along with Rochette, Dan Heiser, and Brash for the Cougars. For the Pirates, Pierce, the man subbed off. He's been pretty unproductive today, but we'll see what Matt Pasternak can do. Pasternak, a junior, sorry, sophomore, where's the number 23? Six feet, 160 pounds. And we see Ariza moving to the left as Pasternak comes on to the right. Mysterio will play home as Clemus leaves the line to send it forward. Prep going three up top in the form of Descavich in the center, Ariza on the wing, and Pasternak on the opposite wing as Planka plays Pasternak. Navin, though, pickpocketing the young sophomore and absorbing the contact from Graham Anderson. Gives the JV game wrapped up on the field behind us as more fans come here to Cal Athletic Complex main grandstands to watch this game. Pirates on true upset alert with under 20 to go. They find themselves trailing by a goal. It was Flynn Danheiser in the eighth minute. A beautiful goal from about 30 yards out. As Sachs' cross will find the feet of Clark, but Sempone to clear it away for the Pirates. Mills will go to his right. He'll go right around Malka and try to send one through. Martin there for the Pirates. Martin, who gave up a penalty earlier in this game, just 50 seconds into the second half. But it was a save from Zach Calvaric. Ben Mills went right. Calvaric guessed right. And kept this goal differential at 1-0 in favor of the Pirates. So here's the scavenge. Oh. The offside flag comes on. If I'm not mistaken, that ball deflected off a Columbia player, which would mean the scavenge would not be offsides, but these refs know more than I, as a yellow card going to be issued to Xavier Levy. He'll have to come off. Clock stops, 16.58 to go. Levy picking up his first yellow of the season as Will Frank will return to action playing in center back role. Now what you want to see is Coach Berman telling his man to calm down. Headed forward as Sempone will win it. Bigley will head it forward. Here come the Pirates. Numbers ahead. Mill showing off the moves. He'll play Ariza. Flag stays down. Ariza and Wolzman going head to head. Here's the senior, Daniel Ariza, but Calvaric staying strong. Mills will put it in. We're even at West Orange. 1-1. That's Ben Mills' fourth goal of the season. What a game on our hands right here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. We knew it would happen eventually. Ben Mills gets a second chance. Ariza's shot bounces off of Calvaric's hand. Unable to reel that one in. And one mistake, and we're all tied up. Zach Calvaric doing all he can, but Ben Mills showing why he's an all-state caliber player. Six goals as a junior, already has four as a senior. If you can't tell, Lars, I'm hyped up for this one. This is gonna be a instant classic. It's a classic every time these two teams meet. The last couple of games, including a 2022 matchup in Maplewood that was an overtime game, three to two in favor of the Pirates. And the game last year in which Chenal Prep pulled away 2-0 right here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. Although the Cougars hanging with the fourth-ranked Pirates all game. 16 minutes, 30 seconds to go. We're squared at one. The consensus here at the Kelly Athletic Complex, Ben Mills is the best player on this field. It's hard to disagree with that, Lars. No, no, I can't. I mean, four goals in three games. Dare I say it. Sounds like an Eddie Krupski type of stat. Krupski, who scored 30 goals for the Pirates as a senior and 21 as a junior, an All-American for the Pirates, now a freshman at Rutgers University. Yet to see any time in the Big Ten for the Scarlet Knights, but I'm sure his time will come as Masseri will send one forward. Calvaric, leaving his line, will retreat back. 
and bring it inside his own AT. So it had been all Cougars until just about a minute ago when Ben Mills, who missed a penalty earlier in this game, scored off of a rebound as a tough head-to-head -head collision. Fontillo and Big Lee both look okay. But it was Dan Heiser in the 8th, Mills in the 16th, to go, sorry. I guess the 56th minute, that would be. Nope, still wrong. No, um, 64th. 64th. Passer Mack will fire through. As flag stays down, as here comes Descavage, she's got a reason on the other side of him. Daniel Descavage's shot, too strong, as we're still equal, one apiece here. How about that opportunity for the Pirates? Doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, Descavage had free real estate ahead of him. Likes to go for the shot instead. Just a bit heavy. Pierce returns as Pasternak will take a seat on the bench. Special shout out here to Grant Kirsten, who's doing our camera for this game. He's been doing a great job so far. Soccer's a tough game to film as the ball is constantly moving, but Grant's holding his own out there. On the call, I'm Rohan Pai. Join with me is Lars Dorson. I hope you've been enjoying our broadcast so far. We take a lot of pride in what we do. If you haven't been enjoying it, you can let our executive producer, Mustafa Hooten, know. As Pierce is played through, flag comes up. That one pretty obvious. Will Pierce about a foot or two off sides. I don't see how anybody could possibly not like the broadcast we've had so far today. I mean, an exclusive interview? How much more can you ask for, you know? We were joined by Gus Reed at the halftime. Reed, a varsity lacrosse player for the Cougars, talked about the upcoming lacrosse season, the past lacrosse season, and the future of the Columbia program. Also gave his insight on this soccer game as a lacrosse player. The games have a lot of parallels between them, as, you know, Reed would say. You know, this game, it kind of reminds me of a, of a great quote of Sebastian Rios Valdez. What would that be, Rohan? The quote goes, the man who walks, the man in, who enjoys walking enjoys the destination than the man who enjoys the destination more than the journey. As this game has been a complete journey, <laughs> the destination, of course, victory for both these teams. We'll see who enjoys the road to get there, although perilous. We'll see who can finish this game on top. That's all I have to say. I'm going to close my mouth for a minute. Wise man, Rohan. Big Lee will play Pierce forward. Pierce on the backside of Martin as Martin will kick it out of bounds. Frank running up to take the throw in. 12 and a half to go left in this ball game, all squared at one. Flynn Danheiser opened the scoring in the eighth minute thanks to a goal about 25 yards out as Mills just swallowed up by Belial. Free kick for the Cougars coming here. Then it was Ben Mills in the 64th who equalized off of a shot from Daniel Reza that was turned away by Kyle Barrett. Masario headed forward as Clark will bring it down for the Cougars. Bigley, a great defensive piece there, will turn it the other way. Here's the press from the Pirates as Belial will play back to Ginsburg. Keeping it in bounds is Barry Navin, although Daniel Rizzo will crash. It'll go out of bounds. Refs say Columbia throw in as Ariza the last to touch it. You know who's been sitting on the bench for a while, Lars? Sebastian Rios Valdez. I'm excited to see him back in this game as he's been playing lights out so far. Absolutely. Came off just a bit winded from before. He'll be back soon. He'll be back now. He is. Yeah, he'll be back soon. Clock stops with 11 minutes, 12 seconds to go as Ariza gets a talking to from the refs. We'll stay right here. Pirates football team suffered a tough loss to St. Joe's of Montville on Saturday. They scored 28-7. Pirates gridiron squad will return to action Saturday at Chaminade High School in Long Island. 
I'll be on the call tomorrow at Underhill Field when the Columbia Lady Cougars take on the Verona Hillbillies. That game kicks off at 4 p.m. Then Wednesday, Lars and I back on the call for Seton Hall Prep taking on Milburn and Millerville. 4 p.m. start in that one as well. Mills goes down, flag comes up. A late whistle as Anderson was brought down by Navin. You know, Anderson, a mellow guy, never, never a hothead, showing a bit of anger there as he let Navin hear it after he was fouled. Deskevich is turned away by Walsman. Here's the Gettysburg commit, looking for Pierce as Martin does well to track it with his head. Fontiel and Frank going at it. Fontiel winning the matchup. He's got nowhere to go. Will just hit it off Frank and earn his team a throw. -in. Sub coming on here as Rios Valdez returns for the Cougars. He'll take off from Fontiel, I believe. Rios Valdez, a former Seton Hall prep player, never quite cracked the varsity squad here at Seton Hall Prep, but scoring three goals last year as a junior for the Cougars as Ron Martin brought down there. Free kick for the Cougars coming up. It'll be interesting here to see if Coach Ryan Muirhead elects to park the bus and, or in other words, just hold on to this tie for the Cougars or if they'll keep on the attack. As Bigley goes down late, Ref say nothing happened there. Big Lee doesn't like that one. Moloko switched the field as here's the junior, Barry Navin. Navin's played pretty well at the outside back position today. As he'll send one high in the air. Goldberg will head it forward. Masseri returns the favor. Goldberg will chest it down and lose it. How about that from Ben Mills? Nice piece of defending. As Walsman brings down Deskevich. Walsman, known as a quite physical player, will drop back into his role as center back. Saw Walsman make a, a true Brexit tackle earlier. As eight minutes show on this big board, eight minutes and seven seconds to be exact. As numbers up for the Pirates, Masseri will like to play short for Levy. Tank has it now. That ball will be deflected out of bounds. So a Graham Anderson throw coming here as Dan Heiser and Sachs get loose on that Columbia bench. Seen all prep, not a team that subs much. But we saw an early sub in Jack Bigley for Bernardo Tinajero who it's unfair if he's out for a medical reason or something of the other as Calvaric leaves his line to make the dangerous save. Big Lee, just a sophomore, playing big minutes. Other sophomores who played a lot today include uh, Matt Pasternak and Will Pierce, of course. Malika has it as he'll go down there, drawing the penalty with Matt Malika. Didn't lose her. Be much contact there, right? So, thought he just fell, but let's say otherwise. Molko will take the free kick. It's about 22 yards out. Not striking distance, but a good opportunity to play a nice ball in. As here's Molka's service, high in the air. Headed down by Goldberg, but it'll hit the outside of the net. Although it did look like a goal from up here in the press box. Right. 6.30 as Masario hit one up the field. Running onto it comes Danny Deskevich. Martin will play one forward. It looked like a high kick from Miskevich, but no call. 
as an illegal throw going to be called on Ben Mills? Mills upset about it. Crucial possessions here in the last six minutes. Malika will try to play one forward as Masseri hits it straight up in the air. Brought down nicely by Mills, but Belial will shield it and let it go out of bounds. Trying to go quickly is Owen Belial as Utah Goldberg will lose it. Dangerous ball for Masseri across the face of the goal as Anderson will just track it down and hit it up. Will Pierce will go on Barry Navin here. Navin has no choice but to hit it out of bounds. Navin limping as he sets back on defense. Appears to be okay now. That ball will go out of bounds. No call, although the Columbia's number nine, that's Sev Podurski, took a fall. Just five to play left. If this game ends in a tie, we'll play two overtime periods, I believe. Golden goal still? Golden goal, of course. As the scavenge has Frank making a run, he'll elect to go to his right foot and play Pierce along the other side. Will Pierce's cross blocked for a Seton Hall prep corner kick. So Mills will walk over to the end line. This is the sixth corner of the game for the Pirates. Mills has taken all six. Masseri heads to the box. Pirates have to be weirful of a Columbia counterattack as we've seen it a couple times today. Anyways, Mills' ball, an outswinger, punched away by Calvary. Anderson will be the first one to it. Here's Mills going through three Cougars as the scavenge will stop and fire a curving shot over the, net, over the net again. So that's the second time we've seen Danny Descavich have a good opportunity. Just too excited, putting it over the net. It was Descavich, Ariza, and Pierce with only one Columbia defender near. And Descavich elects for the shot <laughs> rather than developing their play. As Bly Sachs subs in and Sev Podgorski comes off. Goldberg using his big 6'4 frame to win it in the middle. As the flag going to come up for a penalty, no call from the ref. Until it's finally whistled down, but the refs will say it's an earlier penalty committed by the Cougars, Matt Molica. Well, looks to be a, a yellow card on a reason. Did he? No yellow card. Take out a card? Uh, I thought I saw a card taken out. Sorry. So you know, prep has to go quickly. Only 180 seconds left in this one. You know, when you say three minutes, it seems like a lot of time. 180 seconds. No, it doesn't. Not it's that much. The, the same amount. Oh, it's the way you put it. Masseri will play a high ball headed down by Walsman. Sachs will hit one into the middle of the field as Masseri fires through. Masseri just trying to roll one forward, can't do so as Walsman will send one the other way. Running on it was Rios Valdez, although it'll go out of bounds for a Seno prep throw. Rios Valdez looks a little hurt as Dan Heiser returns. Malika takes a seat on the bench. Rios Valdez will take a seat. Clock stops, 2.09 to go. We're going to step away here. Don't go anywhere. This is an all-time classic on the NHFS Network. Group, which you like family. We'll resume play here 209 on the board as a bad sign for the Cougars faithful. Valdez being tended to by the Pirates training staff on the sideline. Just off the sideline. Yeah. Seems they could have, you know, 
moved a little as Dan Heiser go down. Big lead charged with the penalty. Oh, clock started. Dan Heiser will take his time as Navin returns back along with Martin. Almost everyone else up for the Cougars. It's a great opportunity with just a minute 45 to go. Dan Heiser's ball loose in the middle. Planko will send it forward. Discavich and Martin racing to it. Mills gets it. Uh oh. Here come the Pirates. Pierce making a run. Ben Mills will be tackled by Barry Navin. A great challenge and a great defensive stand from the junior, Barry Navin. Mills looked to have had Pierce on a cross, elected to take it himself. Pirates have it. Here's a Rizzo with a lane to the goal. He'll square it. Here's Will Pierce. Seed Will Pratt. Two, Columbia one, courtesy of the sophomore, Will Pierce. That's Pierce's third, third goal of the year as he puts the Pirates ahead with just 67 seconds to go in this ball game. How about that? An all-time classic here at the Cali Athletic Complex. We're so grateful you're here on D1 Media Pro on the NHFS Network. What a game we've had. The Pirates ha have a counterattack come through. Get stopped, they get right back to it. And Pierce, with 72 seconds remaining, dumps one into the back of the net. It was always the Pirates, Lars. Always the Pirates. Just 62 seconds now on the big board. Sinol Prep, who went down and played down most of this game after a goal early, have now found themselves leading by a goal with under 60 to go. A sub coming on Pierce for the said Cougars. No overtime needed for us. <laughs> Let's get it done in regulation. Mason Beaupierre returns as Clark will sprint to the bench. Clock still running. Levy will send one forward again. How about on that goal? Daniel Ariza just head up, playing for the badge, finding the open guy. Danny Ariza is the reason why this Pirates team had this 2-1 lead over the Cougars. Anderson will take his time on the throw-in. Clock ticks down to 10. Anderson will just chip it as Calveric will go down, no call. Oh. Anderson does well and goes down. Final whistle sounds. Here Buzzer sounds scoring. here. It's over. Seton Hall Prep showing why they're the fourth ranked team in the state. Take down the Cougars 2-1 to one in an all-time classic. Those three whistles. Seton Hall Prep faithful, ecstatic here at the Kelly Athletic Complex. Flynn Danheiser scored for the Cougars in the eighth minute to give them a one-goal lead. Then, with just 30 seconds into the second half, Pirates earned a penalty kick, which was saved by Calveric. Ben Mills finally equalized that one goal apiece in the 64th minute, while Will Pierce, the kill shot in the 78th minute, Seton Hall Prep survives the upset bid from these upstar Cougars 2-1. to one. Lars, how about the goalkeeping play from Zach Calveric? In his first career high school game, didn't get the result he wanted for his team, but his personal accolades, surely, surely impressive. Many saves from Calveric for the first 60 minutes was un, uh, unbreakable or un, unbeatable. And then Mills comes through and then, then Pierce and that's that. But Calveric, definitely a reason to be proud of himself looking forward. In 2022, the Cougars took down, sorry, in 2022, the Pirates took down the Cougars 3-2 at Underhill in Maplewood. Last year it was 2-0 in favor of the Pirates right here. This year, 2-1 in favor of the Pirates. Three games, three all-time classics, and one of the best rivalries in NJ High School soccer. I'm so glad you spent it with us this Monday afternoon right here at the Kai Athletic Complex. I was Rohan Pai. With me was Lars Dorsen. On the camera was Grant Kirsten. We were joined by Gus Reed at halftime. Have a great rest of your Monday, and we hope to see you tomorrow at Underhill for Columbia Girls Soccer versus Verona, and Wednesday as the Pirates return to action versus Milburn at 4 p.m. That's all I have. Have a great rest of your day. Oh.